3D Pinball Space Cadet. If you ever used a PC that ran Windows XP, I'll bet that you've played this game at least a couple of times. Or maybe you first discovered it using Windows 95 with the Microsoft Plus Pack installed. Indeed, Space Cadet Pinball is an iconic piece of software. Whether you played it on a slow day at the office to pass time, or discovered it right when you bought your new computer, it's very likely that this game is instantly recognizable to you. But while this game, this virtualized pinball table, might be very simple, its origin story is anything but. Did you know that the origins of this pinball game can be traced all the way back to Doom? Or that Space Cadet was actually a slimmed down version of a much larger game? A game that had a sequel? How can this be? Let's find out. In today's video, we're going to be exploring the history of Space Cadet Pinball. From its initial conception back in the mid-1990s, to how it came to live on every Windows XP PC in the world. Our story begins back in the summer of 1994, just about a year before the launch of Microsoft's latest and greatest operating system, Windows 95. This new OS was going to be a huge deal for both the company and home computer users. After years of using the Windows 3.1 Program Manager, and prior to that, the text-based MS-DOS command line interface, Windows 95 would introduce consumers to the Start Menu, Taskbar, and Windows Explorer, technologies that were designed to make it Microsoft's easiest operating system to use yet. The company was really betting on Windows 95 being a huge success in this field. So much so that they spent about $200 million to promote and advertise Windows 95. Using this capital, Microsoft created a creative advertising campaign using the Rolling Stone song Start Me Up, based around the new start button. They also hosted a huge launch party in Redmond, Washington on release day to officially announce the OS. It was clear that Microsoft was very confident in the success of Windows 95 and its technologies. But how exactly could Microsoft visually demonstrate these new technologies and abilities to both consumers and software developers? This was a question that Microsoft wanted to find the answer to. How could they do it? One way was through a video game. A game that would be bundled with the operating system right from the start. That would help showcase Windows 95's new features and abilities. This was also kind of an unspoken tradition, as every previous version of Windows came bundled with at least one game. Windows 1 and 2 had Reversi, Can you believe it? and Windows 3.1 had both Solitaire and Minesweeper. But these games, while they were a great addition to these operating systems, were quite simple. Microsoft wanted to find a more advanced game to bundle with Windows 95, but they were faced with a small problem. At this time, the majority of PC games were still being developed for the ever-aging MS-DOS platform, which, although it was the base of Windows 95, did not allow developers to take advantage of the new features and interface. There also weren't many developers who were making games exclusively for Windows. Enter independent developer David Stafford. He and his colleagues of the newly formed Cinematronics LLC saw an opportunity. They wanted to create a game that was specifically designed for Windows 95 and wanted to pitch that game directly to Microsoft. They first experimented with some 2D game ideas, but eventually the small team of developers realized that there was a demand for 3D games, so they decided to shift their focus to that. But what game could they develop? Well, they chose to create a port of a game that was not only immensely successful, but was one of the first games in its category. A game that revolutionized the first-person shooter genre forever. That game was id Software's Doom. id Software originally released Doom in 1993 for MS-DOS computers. The game would eventually become a huge success, and is widely considered to be an extremely significant contribution to the world of video games. Cinematronics wanted to port this game to Windows 95, which would allow it to run from within Windows. The team began work on their Windows 95 port of Doom in the summer of 1994. At the same time, Microsoft was still working on developing Windows 95. After Cinematronics had a stable version of their Doom port, they pitched the idea to Microsoft. Although they had something they could use to directly promote Windows 95 as a gaming platform, Microsoft turned Cinematronics down. The reason? Well, put simply, the game was too violent. 
Microsoft was not particularly comfortable bundling a game like Doom with their flagship product. Although Microsoft still had interest in Doom due to the fact that it eventually was installed on more computers than even Windows 95, making it the best-selling PC software program of 1995. Bill Gates even considered buying out id Software so that they could develop a port of Doom for Windows 95 to be released separately and not bundled with the OS like Cinematronics' port. Eventually, this buyout deal fell through as well. However, Doom 95 still got developed by both Microsoft and id Software and was released in 1996 to promote DirectX. David Stafford and his new company were forced to move on to other ideas if they wanted to pitch a game to Microsoft. Luckily for Cinematronics, Stafford had some connections at the software giant. A friend of his named Alex St. John, who was actually the co-creator of DirectX. After Microsoft turned down Doom, Cinematronics attempted to make the game more kid-friendly, which St. John's supervisor wasn't a fan of. In an email conversation with Stafford, St. John mentioned a comment from his supervisor, who casually suggested, can't we just get a game of pinball or something like that? Pinball. It was widely recognized, had almost no learning curve, and wasn't a violent game. It seemed like the perfect choice. A simple game to learn, yet one that people could replay again and again. Stafford knew that he had something here, so he did something extremely risky, but he knew that if his company could pull it off, it would put Cinematronics on the map. You see, Stafford knew that Microsoft had virtually unlimited resources and could work with any company they wanted to develop a game like this. He wanted to keep their attention on Cinematronics, so he immediately proposed a pinball game to Microsoft. But it wasn't just any pinball game. It was a new and innovative approach to an arcade classic, a 3D game that was specifically designed for Windows 95, taking advantage of the under-the-hood technologies and new user interface. When they caught wind of this, Microsoft responded to Stafford, saying that they really liked the idea and wanted to try out the game. But there was only one major problem. It didn't exist. With Microsoft on board with the pinball game, the crew at Cinematronics had to get to work, and fast. They only had about 9 months to the final launch of Windows 95, which was initially set in April of 1995. When talking to Microsoft, Stafford led on to the fact that Cinematronics was already working on the pinball game, when in fact he had not even discussed the idea with any of his colleagues. Another major problem for the small development team is that they were essentially creating a game for an operating system that didn't even exist yet. They only had beta builds of Microsoft Chicago to work with, which were nowhere near a final product. Before starting development, the team wanted to gain a better understanding of pinball machines. So they decided to go to local arcades to study pinball tables. They familiarized themselves with the design of these tables and the mechanics of the game. After taking some notes and getting their thoughts together, they discussed the design of their software game. The lead programmer, Mike Sandage, really wanted the game to be 3D, but knew that this was a difficult feat. If this game was going to be bundled with Windows 95, it would have to run on every machine that Windows 95 ran on, including the machines that barely met Windows 95's minimum hardware requirements. Keeping this in mind, the game was designed with a top-down view. The entire table would be on screen at all times, but it was tilted at an angle, giving it a 3D-like effect. The team was not even sure if they would finish the game in time for Microsoft's launch day, but they knew that they had to. This was too good of an opportunity to pass up for this small development team. Thus began many 20 hour long days for the lead programmer, who would occasionally spend the night at the Cinematronics office. Needless to say, the team was very dedicated. They were going to get this done. Luckily for them, a major breath of fresh air arrived in late December of 1994. Microsoft, who came to a roadblock with the development of Windows 95, needed more time and decided to push the launch of the OS back four months to August 24th, 1995. This was a huge relief for Cinematronics. The team could take these extra four months to finish development and fine tune the game. And then on August 24th, 1995, Microsoft officially launched Windows 95 worldwide. The pinball game wasn't bundled with the OS as initially intended, but was released alongside it in a separate companion software package called Microsoft Plus. 
It was in this pack that users discovered 3D Pinball Space Cadet for the first time. But to the surprise of many computer users, Space Cadet was only a small portion of the full game. The full version of the game, called Full Tilt Pinball, was published by Maxis, the makers of SimCity, in October of 1995, two months after Windows 95's launch. This full game contained two extra pinball tables in addition to Space Cadet. These two extra tables were Skullduggery and Dragon's Keep. These additional tables were also designed with the same 3D top-down view effect. All three tables in the full game were also playable at 1024 by 768 unlike the version of Space Cadet bundled with Windows, whose max resolution was 640x480. Taking a look at the two versions of Space Cadet side by side, you'll notice some visual differences. For one, the graphic on the top right is different, and the text located on the bottom of the pinball table is red in the bundled version, making it harder to see. There is also virtually no mention of the full game in the bundled version of Space Cadet, leaving some people surprised to find out that there even was a full game. Even more surprisingly, this game had a sequel. Full Tilt Pinball 2 was released in 1996 by Maxis and included the Mad Scientist, Alien Days, and Captain Hero tables. But most people only remember the Space Cadet table due to it being bundled with Windows NT 4.0, 2000, ME, and Windows XP. Unfortunately, the game was killed off with the release of Windows Vista. This was because of a problem that Microsoft programmers encountered when porting the game to the 64-bit architecture, which made the game unplayable. Due to the fact that the game's code was written very hastily and with no comments, only the original programmer at Cinematronics knew what each section of the code did. Microsoft, wanting to release Windows Vista on time, chose not to spend the time to debug the software and just scrap the pinball game from Vista entirely. Eventually, Maxis decided to buy out Cinematronics a year later in 1996 and renamed the group to Maxis South. This team of 13 employees would later go on to develop games for Maxis, including Marble Drop, a puzzle game where the player had to guide marbles through a contraption into the correct bin at the bottom of the screen. However, none of these games would have the major success that Space Cadet Pinball had. So there you have it. That's the story of how a small, humble team of software developers ended up creating the most popular virtual pinball game in the world. That's all for today's video. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.